And North Carolina gets the ball first. NC State won the toss, but deferred. The Tar Heels coming out to get it first. NC State on the season, struggling with just one win in the ACC. That came against the University of Maryland, but one of their four wins this year came earlier in the season against Pittsburgh, a Pitt team yeah, that will play for the Big East Championship. Yeah, they beat Pitt to go 3-1 and one early in the year, beat them 38-31, and Russell Wilson had five touchdown passes that afternoon. He could take over a game. That's what I'm anxious to see here today is how Russell Wilson will handle this Tar Heel defense. He was a first team all ACC quarterback last year as a freshman. Josh Chikowski kicks it off. Cersei and White wait for it for North Carolina. Short kick fielded at the 12 by White. White taken down right around the 35 yard line. That's a 23 yard gain for Johnny, a junior out of Asheville. Impact players, well, Ryan Houston, he's the guy that uh, any anytime they're close to the goal line, you know he's gonna get the football. Yeah, and he'll come off the field even if he's injured to go make that play. And then Zach Pianalto, their tight end, since he's been back, he's been a huge target for TJ Yates. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Robert Quinn, you see 11 sacks. He is all over the field, one of those edge speed rushers that North Carolina State is going to have to contend with. And now North Carolina State dealing with the North Carolina offense right up the gut is the man we just told you about, Ryan Houston. Houston's a load at 6'2", 245, and he picked up six yards. Alan Michael Cash, one of the seniors playing their final games today, made the stop. And there is T.J. Yates, much maligned. He is the lowest rated passer in the ACC, but by and large, they really don't ask him to do too much. No, he's just like him to you know, be within this offense, not make mistakes, and you know, get the ball out to the edges. He's got some good skill players. Through those three interceptions last week, one of which was really bad, it was in the end zone. And there's Greg Little, gets the first down into NC State territory with a nice 14-yard pickup. North Carolina State plays a zone defense, so Little's just going to come across the middle and settle into one of those dead spots in the zone. Now, when you play zone, you want to have immediate contact on the short throws. Nobody shows up immediately for the Wolfpack, and Little, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, Little is able to make some extra yards. And he is a hard guy to bring down, a, con a former running back who weighs over 200 pounds. Johnny White now in at tailback. There's Little in motion. They like to use their receivers in the run game. And Little does just that. Picks up about three on the right side. Audie Cole making the stop. You always have to be aware of reverses from this North Carolina offense. They love the misdirection. Especially, you mentioned, Pam, those receivers. They love to have them as ball carriers. They'll give it to Little. As we just saw, they'll also hand it off to Jeremy Boyd and Eric Highsmith. Get them involved in the run game as well. Second and seven now for North Carolina, opening drive of the game. Yates puts it up and it's incomplete. Zach Pianalto, the tight end, who is quickly becoming his favorite target. Good defense by NC State. That was Brandon Bishop who got a hand in there. And that's a matchup that Coach John Shoup told us he was trying to get is Pianalto on Bishop. Problem was Yates threw it behind him. He was open, but he, le he left that ball outside. Bishop just a true freshman. And as Ray mentioned, North Carolina thinks he could be vulnerable. Three receiver, wide receivers in on third and seven. And they run it on third and seven and get very close to the first down with Ryan Houston. They took advantage of Willie Young, who was playing past the defensive end all the way. He widened his alignment and ran, rushed right upfield, and that's going to create a natural hole. Here's Young right here. and Watch him. See how he just runs upfield? It creates a natural hole. He runs right past the line of scrimmage, and that allows Houston to get up in there. That's what 245, 50 pounds looks like coming at you. And that's what a first down looks like. Brian Houston 
had a thigh bruise last week against Boston College. Didn't play at all in the second half until they got close to the goal line. They called for the goal line offense and out yeah. trots Ryan. Yeah, Coach Shoup said he was trying to get his fantasy numbers up. <laughs> yeah. And soon thereafter, in fact, one play later, he was in the end zone with another rushing touchdown. And both he and Butch Davis very uh, actually pleased that Houston was a gamer and wanted to go in there. Johnny White back in the backfield on first down. There's little in motion coming into the slot and lining up and a timeout taken by North Carolina. North Carolina. Carolina's already gone 30 yards in five plays. The opening drive of this game against NC State. NC State totally dominated them last year, winning at 41 to 10. We're scoreless so far in Raleigh. We are getting ready for the sixth play of the opening drive of this football game. North Carolina had taken a timeout. Ball sits at the 34, first and 10. There's a wide receiver coming around. That's Jeremy Boyd, one of the true freshmen on this team, and he picks up a first down, dragged out of bounds after a 13-yard gain. Nice block by Ed Barr on the tight end. Watch him right here. He's going to come around and hook the edge. See him get the position and then hook the edge man. That allows the lead blocked by White to come out the other side and then Boyd running full speed on that fly sweep. Boyd was a high school sprinter, showed you some of the speed. Picked up another first down. Houston going over the left side, taken down at the 16 yard line by Audie Cole. I haven't seen a lot of blitz yet from this Wolfpack defense. That's what they're known for. When we were speaking to Mike Archer, the defensive coordinator, he said back in the spring, they were blitzing 66% of the time, two out of every three downs. And he said their goal is usually around 50%. They want to blitz. I haven't seen not, not much of it today, just three times so far they brought pressure. Carolina continuing in the red zone on second and five. Out of the eye formation. Yates rolling to his left. And he pulls it down, dives down, a couple of yards short of the first down by Leroy Burgess, one of 17 seniors playing their final games for NC State. NC, excuse me, NC State like North Carolina both picked to finish third in their divisions. And NC State with a rash of injuries just having a disastrous year. I was going to say, pretty good decision by TJ Yates. Held on to it. It got a close to the first down. And now here is the first down. That's Little again. So we've seen wide receivers carry the ball three times. They're going to call a holding on that and bring it back. Quick snap that time for the North Carolina offense. Holding. 17 offense, 10-yard penalty, with will third down. They got the tight end, Zach Pianalto, with the hold. And that'll nullify that little reverse play for the first down. There's Pianalto right there. And you see he's just going to go out and wrap up and got the arm over the shoulder. I don't know. He grabbed Jarvis Bird. So I'm sure Mr. Bird would tell you it was definitely holding. So instead of first to goal from around the four, here it is, third and 11. They have to get down inside the 12. Another run play on a third and long. Johnny White this time, but he has stopped a couple of yards short of the first down. Picked up about eight yards on that play when they needed 11. What do you think of that play call? I liked it. Little misdirection. You're not. You don't want to have T.J. Yates make a mistake down here in this area. So you're, you're going to get a field goal, at least an opportunity at once. So I don't mind that play at all. A little misdirection, kind of a counter draw. See what happens. I think it's those kind of plays, though, that have gotten some of the North Carolina fans a little surly yes. about <laughs> the offense and T.J. Yates in particular. Casey Barth has made 14 straight field goals. Well, let's make it 15. Nails that one from 31 yards away. He is only four consecutive field goals away from tying his brother, Connor Barth, who nailed 19 straight when he was at the University of North Carolina. So a good opening drive for North Carolina. They have to settle for the field goal. We're about to see NC State's offense for the very first time 
And uh, Tom O'Brien's team led by Russell Wilson, who we talked about in the open. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year last year. And they are operating today without Dana Bible for the second straight game. Uh, he is uh, not on the sidelines. He was diagnosed with leukemia. That announcement came on Monday. And uh, he is a guy that, that you know, and anybody uh, really in football, he's, he's very well known and very well respected. And well loved, and our heart and prayers go out to Dana Bible. As you said, Pam, diagnosed with leukemia, wasn't able to travel with the team. They found out last Friday, and then they confirmed the diagnosis on Monday. And you know what, he's, he's really gonna be missed uh, around here. He's gonna be missed here today. He's gonna be in that hospital for 30 days, uh, facing rigorous treatment and hopefully they can get ahead of that thing and knock it out of there for him. So the offensive coordinator for the second straight game not there. Coach O'Brien told us he hadn't called plays in 13 years. They had to improvise everything last week because they found out the day before their game against Virginia Tech that uh, Coach Bible would not be there. He was not feeling well, had tests taken, and on Monday the announcement came that he has leukemia. And he is in the University of North Carolina Cancer Center, which is where Butch Davis was treated when he had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosed about two and a half years ago. Clem Johnson steps up at the 16. Written down just short of the 30-yard line by Kevin Reddick, a true freshman linebacker. So what are they doing on offense? Well, it's running backs coach Jason Swepson. Like last week, he will uh, call the plays and relay it down to Tom O'Brien on the sideline. You can sort of see him in there. Right, and then they hired Jay Savetti this week, who had worked for both Coach Bible and Coach O'Brien previously. And he, he's in to help signal the plays and then also coach the quarterbacks throughout the course of the week. First play for NC State is a running play, and it gets hardly anything. That's Jamel Eugene, one of the captains on this team. He is another senior, and he only picked up one tough yard. So Jay Savetti coming in. He was the offensive coordinator at Division III Tufts in Massachusetts the last two years, but very familiar with Coach O'Brien, both at Boston College and at NC State, where he was a graduate assistant. All right, knows the system, and they just plugged him right in. And you know, I, I played for Coach Bible back in 92 with the Cincinnati Bengals and know him personally. And what a great guy. And we wish him the best as he fights this thing. Jamel Eugene picks up seven. And you're not hearing boos, you're hearing you for Eugene. The fans gave him a very nice ovation when he came out with his family for senior day. Senior captain splits the time with Tony Baker in the backfield. And they'll roll those guys in at a moment's notice. They, they really treat him the same. It's, it's really 1A and 1 and 1A as far as Baker and Eugene. Three receivers set on third and two. Whistles before the play. We had some movement on the right side of the offensive line. Jarrell McCuller went early. Ball start. Offense number 50. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That is Jack Childress, our referee today. Here's the big boy right here. And you're going to see him just get a little movement early. Just a little bit quick. Worried about that edge rush. And why not? Because uh, Tar Heels will come hard off the edge, especially with E.J. Wilson and Robert Quinn, those bookends. They will get upfield on you in a hurry. Jarrell McCuller, a senior out of Jamesville, North Carolina, another captain on this team. Got up too early. Four receivers in on third and seven. Wilson has to run, try to get away from pressure, and he lost the football. Another turnover for North Carolina. Nope, they say that NC State was able to get up to get the football, even though it looked like Bernie came up with it at the uh, under the pile. Robert Quinn is the one who ran him down. He ran up the field on the edge rush, and there he is ripping the ball out. Definitely a fumble. The ball was out. It's just a matter of who's going to get on that loose pigskin. It was definitely picked up by Jamel Eugene. Well, the false start on third and short forced him into a third and long, and now the punt. Ugly but effective, I guess. Jeff Ruiz. 
Got a bounce to pad that punt for 42 yards. TJ Yates in North Carolina back on the field. NC State trailing 3-0. TJ Yates airing it out to Greg Little. Little catches it on the fly and is dragged down from behind at the 13-yard line. He had C.J. Wilson matched up man to man and he beat him. T.J. Yates dropped that one into the bucket. He talked to us previously about a drill where they, they put a big trash can about 45 yards down the field and he throws it up and tries to drop it into the trash can. That one dropped right into the old trash can with number eight on the back of it. That is a 62-yard pass play that puts North Carolina in great position at the 12. They give it to the big guy, Houston. He is bottled up right around the 10-yard line. So a big play. You'll see this from North Carolina. They'll, they'll kind of dink you and dunk you to death and kind of put you to sleep almost with their boring a kind of short offense, and then they'll, they'll go long on you. Right, and particularly the first play of a series, they love to take their shots, usually off a of play action. That one was just a straight drop back. A little ninth in the ACC, averaging four and a half catches per game, coming up with 62 big yards. And Johnny White lined up in the backfield. He has bounced between receiver and running back in his career, and this time he bounced into the end zone but lost the ball. Yeah, he fumbled that thing outside the end zone, and then it's recovered in the end zone by C.J. Wilson. That's going to be a touchback. For the Wolfpack, Clem Johnson, the safety, the senior, knocked it loose. So just when it looked like North Carolina was going to extend this lead, NC State forces the turnover. You see Clem Johnson along with Dwayne, excuse me, not Dwayne Maddox, but Jarvis Bird. And they're going to take a, a look at it and review it, but this ball definitely comes out. Bam, right there, you can see it. It's gone already before he breaks the plane. And our replay officials are gonna look at that. John Armstrong is our replay official. Tommy Giles, the communicator up there. And I believe that this play will stand as called on the field because there is no indisputable video evidence to overturn. I think it's gonna be confirmed, in fact. NC State, for the season, an incredible negative 13 in turnover margin. Things have not been bouncing their way, and this time something finally did. White was a starting running back in North Carolina in 2007. Played some cornerback, then back to running back, and finally the wide receiver. Yeah, he knows what to do with the football, but it's tough when Clem Johnson is pulling on it, and then Jarvis Bird is coming in there and whacking him. And that thing definitely came out. And then C.J. Wilson comes in to recover it in the end zone. The call on the field again. That After it is a touchback. Review, the Here call we go. on the field has been confirmed. First down. Yeah, exactly as I had expected. And it didn't take him that long to get it right. North Carolina on its two drives, okay. has moved the ball for 133 yards, been in the red zone twice, Ray, and they only have three points to show for it. It's a lot of times that'll come back and haunt you. And that's big for an underdog like NC State. Tony Baker now in the backfield, one of the two backs they shuffle in and out, and he doesn't get a whole heck of a lot, about a yard. Cam Thomas with the stop. Thomas last week, his first career touchdown on the 20-yard fumble return at Boston College, and he celebrated almost yeah. a little too early on that one. <laughs> he did. He actually stuck the ball out at about the five-yard line, and he's lucky it didn't get knocked away from him as the defender jumped on his back. First career touchdown, understandably excited. 6'3", 325. Four receivers for State. And that one is handed to Baker, and he lost a yard. This North Carolina defense is in the top 12 in four major categories nationally. And boy, that was, uh, that gap just closed up in a hurry. Yeah, and I said this last week, Pam, they have a pretty much a star at every position. When you go across their lineup, there is not a weak spot in there. In fact, there are playmakers across the board. 
You're definitely going to see some of them playing in the NFL. We even have some juniors who are going to be thinking about leaving early. Oh my goodness, Wilson took one hard hit from Marvin Austin, one of those juniors who is thinking about entering the NFL draft, just smacked him. Marvin Austin with a little arm over swim move. Here he is right here, and watch the work of the hands. Club, and then arm over, bam. He just went right by the left guard, Julian Williams, like he wasn't there. It's actually the center, excuse me, Ted Larson, that he was working on, and he just blew past him. Austin is 6'3", over 300 pounds now. He came in as a highly touted recruit, has put on a lot of muscle over the last couple of years, and that's two, three and outs. And State's two possessions, they almost get a punt block. Short punt is fielded around midfield. The fans wanted a roughing the punter penalty, but none is forthcoming. Bernie with the fair catch after a 32-yard punt. Yeah, there should have been kick catch interference as Bernie got hit. Time out on the field. Time out. But there is a timeout. Ruiz with the 32-yard punt. He had a tar heel up close and personal. Welcome back to Raleigh. Butch Davis's crew has been moving the ball very well, but with two red zone trips, just three points to show for it. Johnny White fumbled at the goal line the last time they had the ball, but they do have that stout defense. Two three and outs for the NC State offense. But here's good field position for the Tar Heels starting from their own 49. Ryan Houston tries to spin away and Gets a couple of yards. There's Willie Young, number 97. He's already graduated, and uh, he's a guy that we talked about NFL guys on the other side, but uh, Willie Young will be looked at by the NFL probably as a linebacker. Yeah, I think he'll end up being a stand-up guy in a 3-4 scheme. In fact, he was standing up on that last play, and he does that a lot. He'll be either real late getting his hand down, or he'll just play out of a two-point stance on the edge. And he does it so he can get his eyes in the backfield, and it doesn't hurt him in terms of leverage or quickness. Eight sacks tied for third in the ACC this season. Yates has lots of time to throw it out to Houston. And good open field tackle by Jarvis Bird, one of those true freshmen who have been forced into action with all of the injuries for NC State. They have used 10 different starting lineups on the defensive side of the ball this year because of injuries and also inexperience in trying to find the right guys. Yeah, and most of those changes in the lineups were in the secondary. Three freshmen and a senior going back there for the Wolfpack. And they really like Jarvis Bird. They think he's going to be an excellent player for them. He's made a couple plays so far today, but you can't substitute for experience, and that's what he lacks. Crowd getting into it on third and three. Johnny White stopped just short of the first down. Now they are into NC State territory. Do you think Davis will go for it here? Nah, you punt the football. Your defense is playing great. And so I, I think you, you know, you win, you're in a great position to have that field, win that field position battle. I got Ryan Houston. I'm giving the ball to the big boy. Yeah, don't, I don't know. I, you don't want to give him a, 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 a handhold anywhere, you know? You want to just keep pushing them down and pushing them down. And your offense hasn't proven that they can do it yet. Grant Shallot, his first punt. Clint Johnson gets away from it. And that's a nifty North Carolina roll. Bounces out of bounds at the eight. So give Shallot credit for a 34-yard punt. Russell Wilson backed up. This is where he can hurt you. Got out of trouble and then flicked it forward to Jamel Eugene. Quan Sturdivant, very talented linebacker, stopped him after a four-yard gain. Robert Quinn coming around the edge is the one who flushed Wilson out of the pocket. They have not been able to slow him down thus far. He's already forced one fumble today. Boy, Robert Quinn so talented. Only Derek Morgan of Georgia Tech has more sacks in the ACC this year. He is the fastest ever defensive end at North Carolina, and they've had some. Yeah. They've had some a lot, a lot of talent down there. 32-inch vertical. He's a terrific athlete. And a 4-5-40. Faster than Julian Peterson. Well, that's a nice play. Coming up, that's Charles Brown. Got Jamel Eugene down as soon as he touched the ball. So only a two-yard gain. 
And I think Charles Brown is one of the unsung players on this defense. Watch him break up and he comes up and just delivers a solid hit. There was nowhere for Eugene to go after that because Charles Brown brought it. He had the five interceptions last week. Charles Brown actually had an interception negated by a pass interference penalty. So he had his hand on the ball. Two tight ends on third and three for State. Olsen rolling to his left. And he's taken down. That's Bruce Carter who came up high. So North Carolina State has had the ball three times and all three are three and outs. There's Bruce Carter right there. and He's just going to drop back into his zone and then read and react and close so quickly. And I'll tell you, Russell Wilson is as quick as I've seen at the quarterback position, but even he can't outrun this Carolina defense. Carter, a junior from North Carolina. There was speculation that he would enter the NFL draft, but he made the announcement last week that he's going to stay for a senior season, wants to get that degree and continue to play for the Tar Heels. Jeff Ruiz, third punt of the game already. Cersei runs up, calls the fair catch around the 47-yard line. That's a 38-yard punt for Ruiz. Three punts, all of them here in the first quarter. Now for our conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Here are your seven bowl eligible teams from the Atlantic Coast Conference, and nobody uh, will be able to get in today. These are set, and the big game coming up on uh, December 5th, the week from tonight, 8 Eastern time in Tampa on ESPN. Tech and Clemson. ACC has nine bowl affiliations. They're only going to be able to fill seven of them. Waning seconds of the first quarter for North Carolina. Here's a little play action. Yates on the roll, but everybody's well covered downfield. That's close to being a late hit. Yes, it is. Ray Michelle got Yates on the sideline. Boy, that's close. I don't know if I, I can't blame Ray Michelle for this one. Here he is. You're going to see him running after Yates. Jeff, I don't know how you call a flag on that. Well, he's in the white area. He was just stepping into it, though. And Ray Michelle had a full head of speed. He doesn't have air brakes. But I suppose you got to pull off. He hadn't stepped foot out of bounds prior to Ray Michelle hitting him. I'm going to back up the linebacker on this one. That's shocking. <laughs> Ray Michelle's nickname is Bam Bam. And they got Bam Bam for the marginal late hit. Of course, he's a quarterback, and they, you know, those guys don't get special treatment, right? No, apparently not. <laughs> Boy, what do they say? Put skirts on them? And look who's in now, Braden Hansen. And a quarterback. A little shaken up after that hit. After Bam Bam's hit. One yard gain on what could be the, the last play of the quarter. There is Hansen, a redshirt freshman out of Charlotte. And now uh, he's going back out. Yates coming back in. That puts a capper on the first quarter. North Carolina moving the ball. 145 yards, but only three points to show for it. State fans see their team trailing North Carolina three to nothing as we start the second quarter. In the last two games between these two teams, North Carolina 0-2, beaten by a combined score of 72 to 37, including a 41 to 10 beating last season in Chapel Hill. North Carolina has had opportunities, but only up three to nothing in this game. Yates back in there after a hard hit a couple of plays ago on the sideline. He's got a man. And turning around, to adjusting nicely, that's Jeremy Boyd. The ball was thrown on the opposite shoulder. Boyd turned around and grabbed it for a 35-yard touchdown. And a great job by T.J. Yates of dodging Willie Young. Willie Young took an inside pass rush. Yates saw it, broke outside, and then threw a perfect strike back the other way to Boyd. That is Boyd's third receiving touchdown of the season. And Yates has been very accurate down the field. That's the second time he's hit a deep ball. Two for two on deep throws. Barth makes it 10 to nothing. I'll 
take a look at this. Here, here's Willie Young, and he is going to rush inside, and that's going to force T.J. Yates out. And then the receiver, Boyd, is going to get lost on that backside and just run a wheel route straight up the sideline. And he outruns the defense, and then a really nice throw from T.J. Yates just getting it over Bishop's head. T.J. Yates. Yeah, give me some love, he says. Yep, he's had, he's had his up and downs this season. That's his 11th touchdown against 13 picks this year. And nailing the deep shots. Two for two, 97 yards and a touchdown. That previous one should have led to a touchdown, but they fumbled on the one yard line going in. I mentioned that drill of him throwing that ball into trash cans. He's, Dropping him in there today. A couple of nice long balls for Yates coming off the three interception performance last week in the win at Boston College. Good connection, boy, to very promising true freshman from Gastonia who was almost entirely overlooked in recruiting. His uncle was Keith Jackson, who was a terrific tight end for Oklahoma. Whoa, Nelly. Or is that a different that's the, key that's jack? A different oh, key jack. Okay. But anytime you can throw that in, yeah, that's cer certainly acceptable. Johnson getting it for the pack and a 10 nothing hole. Good return, gets it out close to the 30 yard line. Two yard gain for Tony Baker, Marvin Austin, right in there for North Carolina. This NC State offense, this is their fourth possession, the fourth drive of the game. Their first three drives have uh, been uh, non productive to say the least. Three, three and outs, no first downs. Yeah, that's, that's the key right there, zero first downs. And that 18 yards is updated with that three yard run we just saw. Wilson can take off, but elects to throw it over the middle. There was contact, and there's a flag. Owen Spencer was run into by Kendrick Burney. So there's your first first down, and it comes via penalty. And there was no question about it. As Burney just totally knocked Spencer over. Butch doesn't agree. Pass interference, number 16 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot. That's an automatic first down. Here's the route right here. You can see Bernie just slams into him. You know, he can make the case that he was trying to go to the football, but you can't knock the receiver off like that in, in order to do so. That's an easy call. And it makes that pass by Wilson look a little bit better. <laughs> Bernie has had back-to-back -back games in which he's taken an interception into the end zone for a touchdown. Called for the pass interference on that play. State's first first down of the afternoon. Follow it up with a run to Baker. Baker does a nice job getting into Carolina territory. Picked up six. Another stop for E.J. Wilson. And boy, Tony Baker is a guy who missed in two entire seasons of football because of a, an injury. Hurt his knee on opening day in 2007. It was NC State's leading rusher the year before, but he's been granted a six year of eligibility because of those injuries. Yeah, and he's back to full strength. and. You, you know, you can't even tell at this point, but that's a long road back. Two years recovering. Leading rusher for NC State coming into this game with 711 yards this season. Wilson running. And there's the speed. There you see the escape ability of Wilson because the other Wilson, EJ, was chasing him. EJ's fast, but not Russell Wilson fast. No. And the thing R Russell Wilson does is he hits it in reverse as well as anybody go ahead and w let this thing run and watch him right here when he decides to go and he just backs out of there so quickly and gets to the edge and then he puts a little shake and bake little move there and he's just got great feet here it is real speed when he decides to bail he gets out of there as fast as anybody and that's the first time he's rolled to his right the North Carolina defense when we spoke with Everett Withers, the defensive coordinator said, we want to keep him from rolling to his right because that's when he's so effective and makes plays from nothing. 
NC State facing a third and two in North Carolina territory. Burns its first time out. They'll talk it over. We'll come back with a third down play after a short break. We're back at Carter Finley Stadium. NC State called a timeout. Trying to figure out what to do here on third and two against this terrific NC or North Carolina defense that is first in the ACC, 11th in the nation in rush defense. Russell Wilson, the quarterback, is NC State's second leading rusher this season. And instead he hands it off to Baker, and Baker easily gets the first down. Sturdivant made a stop, but that's a nine-yard gain. Heck of a block by left tackle Jake Vermiglio. And that's what allows Baker to get the edge. You see big number 70 there block, blocking uh, Bruce Carter and knocking him clear on five yards off the ball. Vermiglio, a junior, one of four returners on that NC State line, but he missed three games because of various ailments this year. Four wide receivers in for Wilson. And he flicks it out to Jarvis Williams. Williams ridden out of bounds, picked up eight more yards. So by far, NC State's most productive drive of the day. They started the game with three straight three and outs. And they've been very conservative as far as the play calling thus far, only throwing the ball four times. They're dropping back to throw four times today, and you see the production of late. Early on, they were just kind of feeling things out a little bit, hammering at the line of scrimmage, trying mo mostly to be conservative and do damage control. Looks like they're trying to open up a little bit more now. Wilson, this time in the right flat to Baker, the running back. Baker picks up another first down, this time at the 16-yard line is where he goes out of bounds. So there's a dozen more, this time to the right side. This is like a little pick play right here. And you're going to see he's just going to come out here, but there's a, a, a receiver. It's actually the guy in motion. Watch him block the linebacker that's got that coverage man to man right there. That's a, a pick play is what it is. But because the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage, you can go ahead and block those guys. For the first time in the red zone for NC State this afternoon. Another side, another throw to the right side to Williams. A little activity when he's out of bounds with Quan Sturdivant over there. Big rivalry game between these two schools. Well, we saw an earlier call on Ray Michelle that probably shouldn't have been called. And I don't, I don't know, just continuing action. But you, as a hometown fan, you hate to see your guy get thrown down onto the ground out of bounds. They wanted to, they wanted to even things up. They yeah. wanted the same call that they, uh, they went against him earlier in the game. Michelle called for a harder hit on the quarterback, T.J. Yates, as he was scrambling out of bounds. Slate today delays a reset the play clock, so here's second and five. Wilson, with his running skills, ran into one of his home guys and got the first down, ran right up the back of Andy Barbie, who's about 6'3", 3'10". <laughs> he sent Barbie a winding. Showed you his power, watch him. Follow his back, Tony, but then he just slams into Barbie and gets the first and goal. And they had been spreading them out. A lot of perimeter passes. Great play call to go to that quarterback draw up the middle. The fourth first down on this drive. First and goal from inside. Lost a couple of, in fact, on that play. E.J. Wilson, the defensive end, leading the charge for the heels. And I think you still have to continue to go after the perimeter against this Carolina defense, especially in this area of the field. Continue to loosen them up as you see NC State's red zone numbers for the season. Not too shabby. They have struggled with their running game all season long. 88th in the nation in rush yards per game. Four receivers for Wilson. Try to throw it in. He does that and he gets the touchdown. Jarvis Williams with the catch.
Great anticipatory skills by Russell Wilson throwing that ball to where he expected Williams to end up and Williams got there beating Melvin Williams. It was Williams on Williams there. 28th touchdown pass of the season for Russell Wilson. Tops in the ACC. Tchaikovsky with the extra point. Terrific drive by NC State. No first downs before this drive. So Wilson doing a great job expressing himself on the last NC State drive. It's only a 10-7 lead for Carolina. That kickoff went, went out of bounds. Yeah, a pooch Yikes. kick. Carolina took a chance to let that thing bounce. Unfortunately for them, it did go out of, out of bounds. bounds. By the kicking team, penalty places the ball at the 40-yard line. So the Tar Heels will get it out at the 40. But I want to go back to that touchdown. Right here is Jarvis Williams, and that's kind of the route he's going to run. But the anticipation and the knowing of Russell Wilson is where he's going to be. Freeze it right there. He's going to throw that ball over in this area behind the defender, Melvin Williams. That's, that's just great anticipation by a quarterback knowing where a receiver is going to end up and then getting the ball there. Wilson very effective on that drive. Four for four for 31 yards. Ran it twice for eight yards. T.J. Yates has a long touchdown pass, and that one is Pianato had it on his fingertips and was able to gather it in for a nice gain all the way down to the 40. Johnny White on the reverse, and North Carolina loves this play. White could take it in. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Tar Heels. What a way to respond to the NC State score. North Carolina State missed two tackles on that. That's been a problem for him. Tackling issues in that young secondary. But how about Johnny White? I mean, he took this one. And, you know, when, when they broke it down, when we talked to Mike Archer, the Wolfpack defensive coordinator, he said, we charted 17 reverses in the last four games run by North Carolina. They know the reverses are coming. They just weren't able to stop it. Barth punches in the 17th point of the day for the Tar Heels. Johnny White, no rest for him. He's got, he scored that touchdown, 40-yarder dash, and now he's got to run another 40 yards down the field on kickoff coverage. <laughs> Colm Johnson gathers it in for the pack. Take it down around the 23-yard line. Let's head back to the TD, Ray. Yeah, it's going to be your simple reverse. Here is Johnny White. And he's just going to take it and come around the edge. But I want you to watch the fullback right here come and kick out the safety, Clem Johnson. It's going to be an awesome block right there. Watch, bam, he kicks him out, creating the seam, the cut up inside. Now you got linemen down the field to kind of clean up the trash. And then it's White on the cutback as Devin Ramsey, the fullback, throws the key block. Great job for Johnny White, some redemption for him. He fumbled the ball just as he was going in for a touchdown in the first quarter, and that time he broke free and scored the, set, the second touchdown of the game for Carolina. Jamel Eugene lost a yard on that play. So North Carolina coming into this game, their offensive coordinator John Shoup said that he thought that they would offer opportunities for big plays, and boy, do they, they have a couple of big ones. That touchdown run we just showed you, and then Yates with a 62-yard touchdown, or a 62-yard catch to Greg Little, and then another touchdown pass to Jeremy Boyd for 35 yards. And stinging them for the big ones. Home run balls. Russell Wilson and Doug one of those, has time to throw for a change and overthrows his intended receiver, Donald Bowens. Owens was covered by Denoris Searcy. Great coverage by Searcy, perfect position. And Russell Wilson, he was fortunate that he didn't have that one picked off by the, by the middle safety. Here's just going to be a seam route right there by Bowens. And he gets the inside position, but it's just great coverage by Searcy. And then, like I said, that middle safety was lurking back there. Brings up a third and 11, third and long, something NC State really wanted to avoid today. But they convert it. Caught right 
beyond the sticks by Daryl Davis. This is a heck of a throw from Russell Wilson, the timing on the route. He stares it down the whole way, steps up into the pocket and delivers it. A laser shot to Daryl Davis. Picked up 13 big yards, keeps the drive going. Run right up the middle, some daylight. Close to another first down is Jamel Eugene, taken down by Quinton Copels. One of the defensive ends they roll in there for the Tar Heels. Boy, Copels just got a hand on Eugene, or he could still be running. <laughs> Here it is. Nice job on the cutback there by Eugene. And that's one of the things you have to take advantage of with a fast flowing pursuing defense. Hit them with some cutbacks and some misdirection and use that speed against them. It is indeed a first down. Quentin Copels who made that tackle just tripping up Eugene. His coaches say that he would start at most other places, but he's got E.J. Wilson in front of him on the depth chart. He does get some good playing time, but just tells you how talented this North Carolina defense is. Yeah, they roll nine guys through up on that defensive line, and Everett Withers told us, you know, he just kind of rotates them by field every two, three series, gets guys a break so that they're fresh late in the game. Everett Withers, the defensive coordinator, like a kid in a candy store with all those guys he has, including Quan Sturdivant, among those who got the rap on Eugene. And they just show up. Watch these guys flow to the football. Go ahead and let this thing run. And we'll freeze it on the backside and, and maybe count some hats. <laughs> freeze it right there. You got one, two, three, four, five, six hats in the picture. They run to the football. And the first guy might not get him, but the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth guy will get a piece. You see Charles Brown was one of the first guys in. He's a defensive back, helped disrupt the play. Wilson on the roll. Has his man, it's caught. There's a missed tackle. Owen Spencer, close to another Wolfpack first down. So the last couple of drives have been really good. In fact, it is a first down. And that's what I'm talking about with the misdirection against this speedy defense. You get them flowing one way, and then you come back the other way. And then I tell you, Russell Wilson can throw it running either to his right or left, equally adept. And he just throws a strike there to Spencer. North Carolina coaches were saying they wanted Wilson not to go over to his right, but he has hurt them moving to his left today. Very nifty quarterback. Another first down. Wilson this time has to run for his life from Marvin Austin and throws it away. That's a grounding. Well, he didn't yep. get to the line of scrimmage. And he all, yep, being outside of the tackle box is part of the criteria, but the other part is getting it to the line of scrimmage. Well, Wilson's arguing what? that he had a receiver he out did. there. He did. He had uh, Jamel Eugene right there, and Eugene well, got knocked down. Grounding. 16 of the offense. Penalties lost down. This is, a, this is a tough call Third because down. Jamel Eugene is right there. They were trying to set up the screen to him. Here's Eugene right here, and watch him. He's going to run that screen route. He's going to head over to the right, engage, and then now he's turned around for the screen. He just gets whacked. And so there's really nowhere to throw the football. And, the, you know, the line of scrimmage was another five, six yards ahead. Kevin Reddick is the one who, who got him. So they lose 16 yards because of the grounding call. And it's second and 26. Eugene tries to dance his way downfield, got about three yards before Zach Brown met him. Some boos coming up from the from the fans. You know, it's ironic. I, I talked to John Armstrong and Tommy Giles, our replay officials, before the game, and I asked him about that particular play when grounding on a screen. Can you just throw it, you know, dirt the ball, throw it at the feet? And they said, yeah, most times, you know, they, they can't really judge your intent. So if there's a receiver in that area, they, they'll give it to you. That time they didn't give it to Wilson. Wilson has a receiver one on one with Charles Brown. Here's another flag. Jarvis Williams hit the deck for NC State. That's an easy cause. Charles Brown just pushed Jarvis Williams, pushed off, and then went for the football. Last interference. 
number 12 of the defense, 15-yard penalty previous yeah, spot. Uh, there were three flags flying down. on that one. That's without a doubt. You see the push a little bit right there, and then the ball comes right to the hands. This is probably a better look. See, right there, he gets the contact and the push, and it just knocks Williams over. And that'll keep a drive alive. And Jarvis Williams knows we got one, and Wilson knows as well. Wilson also a very good student on the ACC academic honor roll. And a heck of a quarterback. Time, and then the pocket breaks down. Wilson skips out of it. Marvin Austin, big old number nine, with the tackle. Well, and he had his tight end, Matt Kushner, who was lined up in the backfield, releasing on a circle route. And usually Wilson is pretty good at picking out those check down guys. Wasn't able to get it to Kushner, but he was wide open heading towards the sideline. Instead, he's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. So it's not a sack because he was taken down there. So here's a second and 11 for the pack. Wilson in a mess of trouble, gets out of it, then gets hit hard. Another flag thrown. Donald Bowens down there with a couple of defenders, including Kendrick Burney. And they're talking to each other, Burney and Bowens. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who they call it on. There was some Jocelyn. Defense, 16 defense, 15 yards. They definitely get Burney on it. Automatic first down. Both guys were kind of fighting around for it. There it is right here. You see him kind of going pushing up against each other. Mm. I don't know. And Wilson, he shows you some arm strength though, and he, he took a big hit there from Zach Brown. But that's two. Pass interference penalties on this Tire Hill defense on this drive. Three overall for the game. There's a big wrap up on Jamel Eugene. And another flag comes in late. Getting a little chippy down there. Michael McAdoo pulled away. Cam Thomas came flying on that pile late. I don't know if they're going to get McAdoo for the slam or, or Thomas for the, the, the J.O.P., the jump on the pile. North Carolina is short of a bowl, playing for better bowl position today against an NC State team. It's struggled. Well, dead ball, personal foul, 94 of the defense, half the distance to the goal. It's an automatic first down. And they get McAdoo for the slam. The whistle had blown. Progress is stopped right here. This is well enough. Leave it alone. And they instead they slam him and then Cam Thomas comes flying over the top as well. But the whistle had blown in that situation. Once that progress had stopped, you got to stop. You don't want to. But you trust, have to. Trust me. Or else you get a throwdown penalty. <laughs> Boy, North Carolina really piling up the penalties now. Wilson. As a man, and so touchdown. Jarvis Williams, second of the day. Little double move, Jarvis Williams, the hook and go on Kendrick Burney. Wilson set it up with the pump fake and then lobbed it perfectly over the top into the corner. The Wolfpack hanging around. John Chutkowski in for the extra point for NC State. And a drive marred by North Carolina penalties. Johnny White runs up, grabs a kickoff at the 20. Taken down around the 36 yard line. Let's see what T.J. Yates can do in response. He is hit, and the ball intended for Greg Little falls incomplete, so good pressure that time from the NC State front. 
Yeah, big safety blitz coming from off. Right here, you're going to see it. Justin Byers, he comes late. And by the time he shows up, T.J. Yates is just dodging for his life. As NC State defense does have 23 sacks on this season. Here's a second and 10. A little handoff to Houston. Tack tackled down by Leroy Burgess. So a third down coming up for Butch Davis's squad, which has self-destructed a little bit with penalties. Carolina having some big plays on offense, but their defense plaguing them with penalties. And the offense has hurt them as well with a penalty on an early drive that would have had then a third down conversion to a first and goal and then a fumble into the end zone. So both sides played a little sloppy. They should be ahead by a couple of scores here. Third and seven, NC State brings pressure. Down goes Yates. Leroy Burgess coming in with the sack for the pack. Leroy Burgess gets the sack. He's the big guy right here. You see him just barreling down the middle, but the guy who caused that was number 97, Willie Young. He was bouncing in and out of there, and when he finally did blitz, he threw the center's block, and there was nobody left to block Burgess. First sack by either team today. Clem Johnson fields the punt. Corralled down at the 20-yard line. NC State. Momentum squarely on their side with a couple of timeouts left and just under three minutes to go in the half. And they have one of the most exciting quarterbacks going. In fact, Butch Davis said, with the possible exception of C.J. Spiller at Clemson, that this is the most dynamic offensive player in the ACC. Look at the way they've kick-started this offense after the first three drives, three and outs, and gotten it going since then. Let's see what they have going on this drive that starts at the 20. And they stay conservative. Baker taken down in the backfield by Marvin Austin. Playing since he was a true freshman. And coaches say he loves the game. And he's just really starting to understand what it takes to be a complete player. Marvin Austin plays on the opponent's side of the line of scrimmage more often than not. <laughs> and in that one, he had great penetration and then reach back to make the tackle. Todd McShay, our draft expert, has Marvin listed as the 34th best player, draft eligible player. He is only a junior for Carolina, but thinking about the next level. Pass completed to Daryl Davis, about five yards short of the first down. Wilson has only had two incomplete passes so far today, has thrown a couple of touchdown passes, the best Touchdown throw in the ACC this season. And it's 29 on the year right now. He's thrown some beauties. That last one on that slant and go lofted that perfectly to Jarvis Williams. Four man rush for Carolina. Here's a shot to Williams, who has the two touchdown catches, but that was over his head. Charles Brown was right there, got a fingertip on it. So State has to punt it away. Great example of the ball skills of Charles Brown in this Tar Heel defense. Look at how he times it up. And at the highest point of his jump is when he's touching the football. That, that's just athleticism and ball skills and having that feel for the football and making plays. This North Carolina defense has intercepted 19 passes this season. None so far today. Ruiz's punt. Not so good in the air, but it does very well once it hits the grass. Rolls down to the 25-yard line. That's a 50-yarder for the junior. Let's see what Carolina can do with a couple of timeouts to go. They keep it on the ground with Ryan Houston. Allen Michael Cash makes the stop for the pack. And I don't think that Coach Shoup is in a hurry to spread this thing out and, and put it on the arm of his junior quarterback, T.J. Yates. Uh, they're going to somebody call a timeout. There's a player down, it looks like. 
NC State player on the field will step away and come right back. Well, welcome back, TJ Yates in North Carolina with the football. As there was an injury, Dwayne Maddox, a backup linebacker, being helped off the field, able to walk off under his own power for this NC State team that has just been snake bitten. Tom O'Brien, the head coach, says he's really never seen anything like it as far as uh, losing 13 football players. Yeah, since he's been here, he's just had to deal yeah. with injuries each year. Yeah, seven season ending last year was bad enough. This year they had almost twice that. Here's a third, uh, second and five, excuse me, for Yates. Little play action. Buying some time. Here's another deep shot. One on one, and he hits Jeremy Boyd. And Boyd, for the second time today, has caught a touchdown. This one covered 70 big yards. All right, TJ Yates has been throwing the deep ball with uncanny accuracy so far today. Scrambled out, kept the play alive. Boyd breaks open and he dropped it out of the sky to perfection. Yates has six completions for 206 yards today. Bart's extra point. Gives him a 10 point lead on another big play. Yates' arm very accurate today. Here it is, a little play action, and watch Yates avoid the inside rush, buys the time, sees his man Boyd breaking away from the coverage, and that's the matchup they've been looking for on Byers, and just a perfect throw. I mean, that, you get your guy busting open like that to drop it in on the run, and Yates, Yates didn't even have to take a hit on that one. Boy, what a difference a week has made. Yates really struggled last week with three interceptions against Boston College. A couple of touchdown passes, a guy who comes in, they say he's the first guy in in the morning, the last one to leave, a great student of the game. And they love him now. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how that happens, right? All the folks at Chapel Hill are going, we like this kid. Yeah, he can throw the deep ball with the best of them. Jeremy Boyd is going to be a threat for years to come, a true freshman from Gastonia with a couple of touchdown catches today. With TJ Yates, who only played one year of varsity football on his high school switch from the veer to the spread. North Carolina, the coaches went to his high school to look at somebody else and they found a quarterback. Yates has had a, a stellar career. You know, he was thrown to those great receivers that are all in the NFL now early on in his career. That's right, three of them drafted last year alone. Jamel Eugene gets the short kickoff up to the 38 yard line. So Russell Wilson Coming back out, 41 seconds left to go and a couple of timeouts. D's fairly good field position right around the 37. What do you think they'll do? I think they'll try to work it down the field. I, you know, you, you've got plenty of time. You've got timeouts as we have a late flag come out on that. Last special teams play. Referee Jack Childress trying to figure it out. We have offside on the kicking team, number 40. The penalty is five yards from the subsequent dead ball spot. First down state. So that punches the ball up to the 44 yard line. Definitely in great field position now to, to go ahead and try to do something with this remaining 41 seconds here in the first half. Wilson throws it short over the middle, caught by Eugene, his running back. Gets it just into North Carolina territory, picked up seven. This is the final regular season game for both North Carolina and NC State. State trying to beat their in-state rival for the third straight year. Carolina with the 24 to 14 lead as the clock continues to run. State has two timeouts, didn't take one there. Now the clock stops. Yeah, they wound it. Now to take a timeout. Williams caught it for a first down out of bounds, so they wasted some time on that last before the last snap. Yeah, I, I think you have to take your timeout here. We have a timeout, State. That's they their do. second timeout of the half. So 
little questioning on the mismanagement of this time as Russell Wilson has shown he can do it today. A great throw there, anticipating Jarvis Williams making a move, and then here on a slant and go, lobbing it perfectly over the defender. Russell Wilson has shown that he can get it done today. He might have, they might have botched some of that clock management there. Now that's down to 10 seconds. With one timeout remaining, they can use the middle of the field. And they would need to get about, I'd say, 14 yards to get into field goal range. Josh Chikowski, their place kicker, his career and season long, a 48 yarder against Maryland on November 7th. That was NC State's lone win in the ACC so far this season. Wilson with 29 touchdown passes on the year, tops in the ACC. Jarvis Williams now with 11 touchdown catches, also tops in the ACC. That red line there, that's the field goal range, basically, for Tchaikovsky. Wilson just off the hands of his intended receiver. That was Williams, his favorite target over there on the 30. Six seconds left. Yeah, which gives them enough time. That last one only took four seconds. So they still have enough time to do it. And they don't have to necessarily work the sideline either with that timeout. North Carolina's deepest defensive backs now drifting back close to the goal line. Wilson in trouble goes down. There's the sack. It's Marvin Austin. First sack of the game for North Carolina. And that does it for the first half. Marvin Austin basically was triple teamed. Actually, four guys took a shot at him as Carolina only rushed three. And yet Marvin Austin <laughs> works his way through four guys to get the sack. That's pretty good. North Carolina with three big play touchdowns. Touchdown drives of 45, 44, and 49 seconds. Good enough for the 10-point lead. North Carolina piling up the yards, but they've been really hurt by penalties. Yeah, that's really what's kept the Wolfpack somewhat close in this ball game is the mistakes that Carolina has made. They botched a couple of drives early on, fumbled going into the end zone, also had a holding penalty on a converted third down, which would have been first and goal. And then that last scoring drive for the Wolfpack came compliments of, of four penalties from the Tar Heels. Including two pass interference penalties on one drive. Clem Johnson gets the opening kickoff. Takes it out to the 22 yard line. And the thing that's made the difference though for this Tar Heel offense is TJ Yates in the deep ball. Here he finds Jeremy Boyd on a little bit of a throwback and then towards the end of the half scrambles out, hits Boyd in stride on another long touchdown bomb. That one a 70 yarder. And the deep game has been great for Carolina thus far. All three of their touchdown drives, about 45 seconds in length. That's what big plays will do for you. Two backs along with Russell Wilson this time. They give it to Baker, and he bursts close to a first down. NC State actually had more first downs in North Carolina in the first half, but just chewed up by those long, big plays. Second. Tom O'Brien in his third year in charge at NC State. Wilson on second and one, flares one out to Jarvis Williams who caught both of Wilson's touchdown passes in the first half and he gets the first down. Got a decent block from Owen Spencer out there on the corner to create just enough room for this bubble screen to work. You see Spencer with the block up top and gets Charles Brown out of the play at least long enough so that they can move the chains. A handoff to Jamel Eugene, one of the 17 seniors. Playing their final home game, their final collegiate game, picks up eight yards on that play. A bit of a cutback I angle on the run, and that's where the Wolfpack has had most of their success in that zone game. When they try to flatten it out, they don't get anywhere. But when they cut it up the field, that's where they've been able to crease this Tar Heel defense a little bit.
Another handoff to Eugene. And he is absolutely enveloped. Marvin Austin was there. Bruce Carter also there. A pair of very talented juniors for this North Carolina defense. And yeah, Bruce Carter is the one who fills this gap. Here he is right here. Actually, I'm sorry, he's the other linebacker. He slides up in there and takes the shot. And as a linebacker, when the window opens up for you, you got to take that shot and get up field quick and then make that play. And that's what these Tar Heel linebackers are so good at. Sets up a third and four. Wilson sliding to his left. He's had success throwing when he goes to his left, but that one was tipped away. Looking for Donald Bowens. Deontay Williams got a hand on it. Williams has six picks on the season and got a hand on that one. Yeah, that's a, a missed big, big play opportunity right here. I think that should have been intercepted. I'm sure Deontay Williams would tell you it should have been intercepted. And that's something that Everett Weathers, Withers keeps track of. He calls them MPOBs, miss, big, MBOPs, miss big play opportunities. And those guys hate to see that on their on their grade sheet every week. And there's been two of them so far today. They will chart him, and North Carolina doesn't drop a lot of interceptions. Ruiz's punt, fair caught by Bernie. That's only a 27 yard punt for Ruiz, who is not in the top 10 in the NC, in the ACC and punting. The punter just got booed. I think he did. I believe he did. He had a good week last week, but has struggled so far this afternoon. And Tom O'Brien, we talked to him on the phone the other day, said he's very happy that he made the decision to come to NC, come down to NC State. They have terrific facilities. The new football center to our right at the end of one of the end zones here. But they're just trying to get things together beset with injuries the last couple of years. Brian Houston gets about three tough yards and Coach O'Brien also told us that since he came there three years ago, 27 football players he has dismissed from the program because he believes, in, and he had this up at Boston College, a great academic institution, being a champion on the field as he calls it, as well as a champion in the classroom. And if you don't have As you said, Penn, 27 guys, according to Mr. O'Brien, Mr. O'Brien, did not want to be champions in those three regards. So they are no longer on the field. A flag is down as Houston gets it again. Spins about three yards downfield. Terrell Manning with the stop, but we have a, a penalty flag. In the first half, North Carolina, six penalties for 76 yards. And three pass interferences. This one is an illegal shift. Tom O'Brien dealing with. Illegal shift. Two men in motion by the offense and failing to set for one second. Five yards, previous spot. So second down. Two people shifting at the same time. Again, uh, reiterate that Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator for NC State, missing his second straight game as he is undergoing treatment for leukemia, inpatient treatment at the University of North Carolina Cancer Center. And so many uh, people, uh, obviously our thoughts are all with Coach Bible, a very well-liked guy, very close to the defensive coordinator, Mike Archer, at NC State as well. He was emotional about it, both of them 56 years of age. And they are uh, playing without him again today. And in fact, Coach Archer said that it was just about two weeks ago when he was taking a walk with Dana Bible. And Dana wasn't feeling well, and he said, man, you need to go in and get checked. Everybody kind of had the, a little bit of the flu or a cough or whatever from Hurricane Ida that rolled through here, the remnants of it, and they were out practicing all week in the, in the bad weather, but Coach Bible had it worse than the rest of them, and lo and behold, went in and got checked up, and we're out where we're at right now. Third and 12, the fans Looking for a stop. Yates looking left the whole way with a Wolfpack player in his face. That was Terrell Manning right up in Yates's face mask. And that's a good start for this NC State defense in the third quarter. And the key was the coverage downfield. Jarvis Bird had great coverage on the edge. There was no one for TJ Yates to throw the football to. Yates in the first half only completed six passes, only threw eight of them, so six of eight for 206 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But that was a three and out. Clem Johnson waits back at his 35 for the pack. 
Grant Shalek with the punt. Johnson reversing field. Runs into more white shirts. Great effort, had to run a long way to only get about seven yards on the return, but a terrific effort by Johnson. Another senior out there for NC State. Russell Wilson leading the offense when we come back. We have North Carolina, North Carolina State. Little pump fake from Wilson. Throws it downfield and it's caught. Owen Spencer takes it in for the touchdown. Charles Brown couldn't make a play on it for Carolina. Spencer took it in for six. And another great throw from Russell Wilson. I don't know how Charles Brown did not knock that ball down. It just got past his extended arm right into the hands of Spencer, who was running a deep post route. That was everybody go deep, and I'll throw it as far as I can from Russell Wilson. Spencer has been the big play receiver for NC State, averaging about 24 and a half yards per catch. That one was good for 56 yards. Chukowski makes it a three-point game. And this is just a basic takeoff route. Owen Spencer going to line up out on the outside here and just roll down the field. Wilson's going to drop back, hum it as long as he can. Here he is from the slot, and it's just a one plant to the post. And I'll tell you, Charles Brown's got great position. How do you miss that ball? I don't know. And it ends up sticking to the shoulder of Owen Spencer. I guess that's that's what you call throwing one caught. I don't know how it got past Charles Brown, but there it did. It got right through there, and it stuck to the shoulder of Spencer. It looked like Brown almost got there a little early. Russell Wilson with his third touchdown pass of the game. This is the sixth game this season that Russell has thrown at least three touchdown passes. That's 30 on the year. That's a pretty good year. Wilson had a string earlier this season of 379 straight passes without an interception and against Wake Forest. That's a bowl subdivision record, the 379 in a row. He has thrown 11 interceptions, but the 30 touchdown passes for really a terrific sophomore quarterback. He has a right to smile there. He basically won the ACC Offensive Player of the Year on four games in November last year when he came in and lit it up. Out of that record 379 passes, 249 of them were from last year, where he just right. threw one interception the whole season. Picked it up where he left off this year. So we have ourselves a football game. Searcy with the kick return. Breaks away momentarily and then is wrestled down at the 35 yard line. 22 yard return for Searcy. So let's see what North Carolina can do. They sputtered on their first possession of this second half. They really haven't gotten any kind of drives other than early in the game going. Uh, their scores, if you've made note of them, have, have come on you know, long passes on quick, you know, less than a minute drives. 49 seconds, their longest touchdown drive today. They also have a 44 and a 45 seconder. Johnny White is in the backfield now for the Tar Heels. Here comes a little in motion. He's a wide receiver. They love to run him. And he does just that. The converted running back picks up a couple. Brian Slay, a true freshman with the stop. North Carolina slim and uh, really hurting at running back because Sean Drone, who was their leading rusher, hurt his shoulder against Duke, and that was a season-ending injury for him. Yeah, and I don't know if Ryan Houston, who got knocked out of the game last week against Boston College and then came back in, I don't know if he's dinged up a little bit. He's finally back in the game, but he hasn't carried the, the load like you normally expect him to in this Carolina offense. He has 10 carries for 35 yards. Here comes the trick play. Houston slings it to Little, and it is caught. Little comes up with it somehow at the 20. Clem Johnson was right there with them, but Little comes up with the football. Everybody can throw it deep today for these Tar Heels. There's Houston 
fakes the sweep, checks up, loads up, drops it in there perfectly. That's a heck of a throw from a running back. Attack down 15. It's a late hit. They protect the passer, whether it's a quarterback or not. Houston got roughed after he let that thing go. So they get 42 yards on the pass, and then half the distance to the goal line. That puts it down right at the 10, where it's first and goal. And here comes another end around. This is Boyd. Jeremy Boyd doesn't get anything. Good job by the NC State defense, in particular Terrell Manning. And we have a hurt Wolfpack player at the goal line. And another penalty. That's Jarvis Bird, the true freshman corner. We have dead ball. 70 of the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. It's second down. They call the penalty on Allen Pelt. The right guard. And here at the end, there's the late hit right there by Pelt. Just pushes Floyd from behind. There's I mean, that's way after the play. No, no reason for that. And it had nothing to do with the injury, but. Here's here's what happened. With little working on bird and that's just a, a flat out pancake block. Drive a man 10 yards off the ball and then plant him on his back. That's then you talk to him a little bit. I don't know about that go without that just blocking him is enough and Greg Little is not little he's about 215 pounds about 25 pounds more than Bird who he planted yeah he had already let his pads do the talk and he should have left it at that yep second and goal but the ball's backed up to the 24 because of the penalty on Pelk. He's got Houston in the flat, finds him. Good move inside by the big running back. C.J. Wilson down there to make the stop seven yards on the game. That's a good open field tackle by C.J. Wilson. As Audie Cole had initially missed the tackle, but he forced it back inside and allowed Wilson to get Houston in his sights. So third and goal from the 17. Jarvis Bird, the starting corner, is out of there, so a thin secondary gets thinner for NC State. Both Pat showing blitz. They bring one backer. Yates moving nicely to his left, finds Pianalto, who is his go-to guy on third downs. But it's third and goal, and he stops short. And the state secondary kind of lets Pianalto just run free in there. And really nobody around him until the very end when the tackle is finished by Clem Johnson, the safety. And that puts Barth in pretty good field position for a field goal here. Barth from 20 yards away. This would be his 16th straight if he makes it. And he does. Casey now three off the record set by his big brother, Connor. The lead is back to six for the Tar Heels. Some of the pregame ceremonies here at Carter-Finley Stadium, 17 seniors playing their last football game for the Wolfpack. Families on hand. A couple of the players for NC State are dads, and they had uh, a good, what they hope is a great goodbye if they could upset North Carolina today, and they're hanging around, only down by six. Yeah, it's one of those deals, a hang around game where if you're not careful, if you're Carolina, it can come up and bite you. And another Carolina penalty down by the goal line. 
forced him back. They had a Casey Roth field goal. Hence the kickoff. Bowens gets it. Bowens has some running room up the right side. A flag is down. And that was Casey Barth, number 11, who came in on the tackle. This could be coming back. Barth has a couple tackles on the year, so he's not one to shy away from that contact. Illegal block in the back. During the return by the offense, number 19, 10 yards, first down. So instead of having it at the 43 yard line, it comes all the way back to the 23. Hey, here he is, Clint Johnson. And they called that a clip. I don't know. It looked like he was initiating it in the front to me. I don't like that call. Wilson on the roll right, running away from EJ Wilson. Eugene gets it and maybe gets a couple on that play. No real rhythm to this well pack offense in the second half. You know, the one score they had was the long bomb. Other than that, I don't know that they've found something to hang their hat on. Owen Spencer catching a 56 yard touchdown from Russell Wilson, who has thrown three TDs this afternoon. Here's a third at six. Only a four man rush for the Tar Heels. Open real estate for Wilson. And he is taken down. Boy, Brown was in front of him, and then E.J. Wilson came from behind to tackle the quarterback. E.J. Wilson was relentless on that play. He runs up the field, and then he's going to reverse and go back. Watch him. He'll get up, and then he'll come back chasing the quarterback, Russell Wilson. He gets up there. He's double team. Watch him fight all the way back. He knows Wilson's going to have to put a move down the field. And that's eight tackles on the day so far for E.J. Wilson having a heck of a ball game. Overshadowed by Robert Quinn on the other side of that defensive line. But his coaches really, uh, in particular, when we talked to him earlier this week, said Wilson has had a terrific senior year. And that was a terrific play. Bernie with the fair catch after a 31-yard punt. So let's see what North Carolina counters with. It's with sort of a typical pass, short pass. Eric Heisman, first time that true freshman has been thrown to today, picks up four. Heisman out of high school was uh, somebody who was not recruited very highly at all, and they, the Carolina coaches noticed in camp that this kid simply caught everything thrown his way. Yeah, they figured out he was pretty good in a hurry, and he made a splash early in the year. We did an East Carolina, North Carolina game, and he showed up big in that one and has been moved into the starting lineup ever since then. Caught six passes for 113 yards and his first collegiate touchdown in that win over the Pirates. Ryan Houston, tackled by Bobby Floyd. Here's a first down on a quick snap play. And now Yates improvising, then finally going down. Sterling Lucas, a linebacker, drops him right at the line of scrimmage. But a great decision by TJ Yates because Jeremy Boyd was double covered down the field, and that's where he wanted to go with it. It was not there, and he made the smart decision by having uh, a little pigskin for lunch, eating the football. Yates second in North Carolina history in passing yards to Darian Durant, who he will not catch unless he has an incredible senior season. Durant had over 8,700 career yards through the air. Houston gets bottled up. NC State defense drops him for no gain. Willie Young, one of the graduates on this NC State team, made the play. Yeah, Willie Young has been jumping around 
lining up in all kinds of different spots and being the lead man on these blitzes. A lot of times just sacrificing himself, hoping to open it up for somebody else. That time he opened it up for himself. Third and ten. Yates has a passing lane, another deep shot down the field, and he overshot Eric Highsmith, who had some separation between himself and the defensive back. And Yates, I, you know, the difference between this one and the other ones is he didn't put much air under this one. And then the previous long balls that he's thrown, he's gotten a lot of air under it, and he knows right there that he threw a little bit too much on a line for Highsmith and who had C.J. Wilson beat by a couple steps. That is the first deep shot that Carolina has missed today. Three for four now. One of the deep shots was thrown by Ryan Houston, a running back. Another punt for Shalik. Cam Johnson drifts over, makes the fair catch just inside the 10 yard line. NC State only down by six to Carolina and they have the football. Wolf back, Jarvis Williams catches the Russell Wilson patch, pass and stays on his feet to get about three yards. Kendrick Burney pushed him out of bounds. NC State really sputtered out of the gate in this game. Their first three drives were your classic three and outs, but since then they've done quite a bit of damage, Ray. Yeah, they figured out a few things, and the biggest thing they figured out is Russell Wilson throwing the football around the yard, and in particular to Jarvis Williams, who has two of the touchdown grabs, Owen Spencer with the other. Four receivers in. Wilson decides to hand it off to Baker. Baker takes a guy with him about two yards short of the first down. So a third and short coming up for the Wolfpack. I'm impressed with whoever gets the football from the Wolfpack are fighting for everything. I mean, on that last one, Williams looked like a pinball hanging around off of people to try and get extra yards. And then on this one, Baker gets the extra yards. Out of the eye now. Baker still the tailback. Gets it. Finds a hole. Finds a first down. Bruce Carter with the stop, but not before Baker got the first down. Made a real nice cut to Baker on this. He's just a power play. He's got a fullback and a guard leading up in there, but he just lowers the shoulder and pushes Bruce Carter backwards for enough yardage for a first down. First down from the 22. NC State trying to beat North Carolina for the third straight time. Another handoff. That's Baker yet again. Second and five. Keeping it on the ground, NC State. Another nice cut. How about Baker? Kid who missed two full years with a hurt knee. Perfectly healthy now. Picks up 13. And you said it, Pam, a really nice cut. As you see, Quinn runs up field and basically takes himself out of that. And then all of a sudden now Baker's on that next level. And he makes a beautiful cut and outruns an arm tackle. And all of a sudden this Wolfpack offense is inching their way down the field. Baker with some fans in the stands coming into this game 11th in NC State history in rush yards. As this is shaping up to be the final play of the third quarter. Right back to the run game, and it's Eugene. Marvin Austin lost his helmet. Seven more yards for the pack. Copel's made the stop, but NC State keeping the ball on the ground. A nice little drive going. They're down six as we head to the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter about to get underway in Raleigh, North Carolina, only with a six-point lead over NC State. Carolina really doing it with big plays, but hurting themselves with big penalties. And Russell Wilson has been tremendous. Keeping NC a minute. That's right. NC State, three of those first four three and outs came in their first three drives. And this is an, a nifty drive they got going. Wilson puts it up and completes it to Baker. 
And Baker gets another first down. This drive started all the way back on the NC State 10 yard line. And here they are in the Carolina territory at the 38. This has been a, a gritty drive, Pam. A lot of yards between the tackles, a, little run, a lot of run after the catch. And just looks to me like the Wolfpack's fighting it a little, little bit harder than maybe what the Tar Heels are right now. Russell Wilson, the talented sophomore, sophomore quarterback, alone in the backfield. NC State has never led in this football game. Oh, pressure, E.J. Wilson in it, but it didn't matter. A touchdown pass to Spencer as Russell Wilson was taking a huge hit. And Russell Wilson continues to dazzle. Stood in there, took the shot, laid it out perfectly as E.J. Wilson got the hit on him. He throws it to Spencer, who beats Cersei over the top on a go route. And just like that, the drive is capped off. Tchaikovsky's extra point gives NC State its first lead. That was a 90-yard touchdown drive. Very impressive drive. And here's the hit coming. Nobody blocks E.J. Wilson, and he just bears down and hits Russell Wilson. But Russell had a chance. He's got man-to-man -man coverage, and he threw his receiver, Owen Spencer, away from that coverage, and it just turned out perfectly. I mean, you, you can't throw it any better than that. And then the toughness of uh, Russell Wilson. <laughs> He's having a little fun out there, ain't he? Fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon for Wilson gives NC State its first lead of the day. Well, I tell you, when you have a Russell Wilson at the helm of your offense, you've got a chance every week. That's what Tom O'Brien has, and I said it at the top. He can keep you in a ball game like this. The other thing that's kept the Wolfpack around is the mistakes, the untimely mistakes by North Carolina. And we've been talking about hanging around, hanging around. Well, not only are they hanging around, they're ahead now. And most of the crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium now on their feet. On a beautiful afternoon in Raleigh. Johnny White gets it, takes the kickoff close to the 30 yard line. 20 yard return for him. Justin Byers made the stop for State. But now North Carolina takes the field today for the first time behind in the game. And it's going to come on the shoulders of TJ Yates who has made some big plays down the field in the passing game today. Hitting on 9 of 13, but for an amazing 231 yards and a pair of long touchdowns. Three receivers, a little bunch set to the right of Yates. They fake the end around, and he throws to a wide open Greg Little. Boy, a good pass, and Little would still be running, but Little had to leave his feet to bring it in for a 17-yard gain. Yeah, this bunch formation is their reverse formation. Here's Little. He's just going to sneak out over the middle of the field. And good play action, good faking. And you're right, Pam. Had that ball been stuck on him instead of throwing too high, Greg Little had a lot of opportunity after that catch. That was a nice catch by Little, who has four receptions for 135 yards today. Pretty good average. Big time average game for most of these guys. Here's a nice run by White, who escaped an arm tackle and picked up nine yards. Got a nice block from Devin Ramsey, his fullback. Kicking out the contain, and then Johnny White trying to get him going a little bit. This Carolina offense is answering. Haven't done much this half. So they might have gotten awoken. Johnny White yet again 
gets the first down. 10 more yards down to the 34. Audie Cole with the stop. North Carolina led 24-14 at the half. And now trailing for the first time. But wow, what a response to the NC State touchdown. Jonathan Cooper had an excellent block on that last play. Double teamed on, on the lineman and then got up and pinned the linebacker. And that allowed it to open up for Johnny White. There's Little in motion. Now in the backfield. Gets the handoff. Gets around the edge. And is out of bounds. We have a penalty flag down. Well, Zach Pianalto might be called for a second hold of the game. Definitely. He tried to hook the edge defender and wasn't able to do it and had to grab him. And those are, that's a drive killer type penalty right Holy. there. Number 17 of the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. And here's Pianalto right on the edge there. And you see him, he's going to grab and then he won't let go. He's working on Shea McKean and McKean hangs in there. With that penalty, North Carolina now over 100 yards. The penalties, nine for 107 in this game. Makes it a first and 21, backed up at the 44. Keep it on the ground, hello. That was White met squarely by Willie Young. And Young does the same thing he's been doing. He comes up out of that stance. Right there he is and just works down, splits a couple of blockers and finishes off in a big way with a big hit. Carolina continues to go backwards now second and 22. Again in the backfield. This time they fake to him. Hand it off to White. Looked momentarily like he might throw the ball, but instead he held on to it and was tackled after a three yard gain. Yeah, he definitely wanted to throw the ball to Highsmith as Highsmith snuck out. This was going to be a reverse pass. Highsmith is up here. I take it back. Highsmith was at the. Yeah, he was at the top along with Pianalto, but they were trying to throw that out of the reverse. And it was well covered down the field by Clem Johnson. Oh, Clem wasn't having any of that. NC State rushes four. Yates with time, dumps it down to his checkoff man, Wang in Houston. Houston doesn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Terrell Manning made the stop. You go back to that holding penalty on first and 10. And that's what really stopped this drive. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Woods Davis decided to go for it here. He's kind of in no man's land. It'd be about a 50 yard field goal. No sense punting. Go for it. And as consistent as Barth is, his career long is only 42. Here they go on fourth and ten. Yates flushed, throws it out of bounds. Willie Young was after Yates, and Yates threw it away. And I don't like that decision by Yates. I think you throw it up for grabs to your, your best player down the field. It's a fourth down. You might as well, I mean, an interception's not going to hurt you. It might even help you, as a matter of fact. And here's what Yates is looking at. He's got coverage down the field, but he knows he's got a defender or a, a receiver out in that area. And Coach Davis is not what he wanted right there. Now throw it up for grabs. Give your guy a chance. Heck, it's fourth down. And if it is intercepted, as you said, it's almost sort of like a punt. Oh, there's a fumble. Heads up play by Wilson to get right on top of it. But NC State loses five yards on first down. I don't know if Russell Wilson was trying to pull that thing out and run with it. It's that zone read play. 
where he has the option of either pulling it out or riding it and giving it. And I don't know. It looked like he was a little indecisive there. NC State has not turned the ball over today. This is a team that came into today minus 13 in turnover margin for the season. And this ball hawking Carolina defense has no turnovers. Eugene tackled by Bruce Carter about four yards downfield. Well, Carter can cover some area, and then he did a Superman tackle. Unofficially, nine tackles on the day for Bruce Carter. He forgot his case, but he was flying through the air pretty good. Todd McShay says he is the 22nd best draft eligible player. But Carter says he's going to come back and play his senior season anyway. A lot of these guys on this Carolina defense are juniors that were thrown into the fire as freshmen. They've been playing together for three years now. They expected to be this good. Wilson has to get away from trouble. Throws it downfield. And out of bounds. Daryl Davis was down there. Well, Wilson was running for his life. I don't know that Wilson even saw Davis. I think he was looking for Owen Spencer coming across, and he figured with the heat on him, he'd just throw it away and turn it over to the defense. Jeff Ruiz in to punt for NC State with this unorthodox formation. Usually they try to punt it over to this side where you got all those guys covering. Yep, it almost like a little rugby style, but it's caught on the fly by Bernie. That didn't work. Short punt, only about 26 yards. Carolina with the ball, and we come back to Raleigh. NC, 24th in the nation, trailing NC State. Jeremy Boyd. These wide receivers for North Carolina, such a big part of their running game. Boyd gets the first down. Yeah, and they ran away from the blitz for the Wolfpack. And out of 47 plays, the Wolfpack has blitzed 23 of them. And here you see, you're going to see blitz coming right here and right here. And they got the right play called as they run away from that blitz and get it up to the second level where people aren't folding over. First down into state territory on the 48. Ryan Houston tries to get around the edge. Redshirt freshman from Lincoln to North Carolina wouldn't let Houston get by him. Excellent job of keeping the contain and the leverage out there that time by C.J. Wilson. Just did not let him get the edge. And that's exactly where Little was trying to go. Excuse me, Houston was trying to go. This NC State defensive backfield minus Jarvis Bird, who went out with an injury earlier in the game. So Bobby Floyd getting a lot of playing time. Houston there shows you that's more that Brian Houston used to seeing. Right, right off the middle, right off tackle, and he busts forward for a first down. And this is where coach offensive coordinator John Shoup likes to run Ryan Houston. And we spoke to him previously. He said, I would love to see Houston pick up about 80 yards in the fourth quarter. Yep. That usually means they're ahead or it's a close game, and they're just trying to rely on the big back to close it out for them. Of course, defenses get worn down as the game goes on. First down from the 38. Houston, the tailback. Yates, quick throw, completes it to Little. That's a good tackle by Jordan Monk, who now is in there Boy, with Bird's injury. And Monk is uh, playing a little scared out there. He does not want to get beat deep. Look at the cushion between him and the receiver, Greg Little. I mean, he's given him all the respect in the world, and Yates saw it. And I'm sure that was one of those eyeball audibles where you see a guy playing 12 to 15 yards off, your guy just hitches it up and you get it out there. Mark has not had a lot of playing time. He's a sophomore from Seekonk, Massachusetts. Boyd went backwards 
That's great. That's a great job by NC State's defense. And who else but Willie Young's in the middle of it, right? Willie Young, and then watch Shea McKean right here. He's going to be up the field initially and pin this thing inside. And he gets the initial contact, and then Willie Young coming from the other side finishes it off. And that loss of 12 yards knocked him out of field goal range. It would be about a 48 yarder now, six yards more than Barth's career long. Although they have told us Barth has made it from 52 in practice. That gets some yardage back. Nice throw over the middle on the slant to Little. But you'd hate to have Connor Barth have to make a 52 no. yarder and he doesn't after that clutch throw from TJ Yates. It will be a 38 yarder very much in the range of Barth who was hit from 31 and 20 today. So he has hit 16 straight field goals. This one will get the lead back for Carolina if he hits it. And it was blocked. Willie Young, the talented defensive end, Got a hand on it. Casey Barth's streak of field goals consecutive ends at 15. And what a big play to end it on. This would have given him the lead. In year for the Wolfpack coming in. One and six in the ACC, four and seven overall. And right now they are upsetting North Carolina. No team they'd rather beat than the Tar Heels. Big play on first down, Jamel Eugene stopped by Robert Quinn. Let's go back to that blocked field goal, Ray. Yeah, and there's a couple things I think you need to look at. First of all, watch Barth. He's going to chunk up some turf, almost like he chili dipped the thing. And then right there is Alan Michael Cash with the big hand getting up there and knocking it down. And Butch Davis, the disappointment. He can't believe it. I don't know if that, that would have been good had it not been blocked because I don't think that Connor, or excuse me, Casey Barth, Casey Barth hit that thing very good. And I had shorted Casey. He'd actually hit 16 straight field goals before that miss. TJ Yates hoping to get the ball back. Maybe this defense will get the ball back. How about no turnovers for NC State today? Incredible, especially against the defense that had been red hot and forcing turnovers. Four defensive touchdowns in the last couple of games. Oh, Tony Baker, talk about effort. Look at Baker carrying Melvin Williams for a while. Charles Brown couldn't get him down. He got 15 red. Yeah, and that's why you put Baker out here. You're running back. You put him on the edge because he's got good hands, but also because he can break that tackle, which he did. He ran right through Charles Brown. Big first down for NC State. All they have to do, hold on to the football, and they'll get themselves a victory. Carolina with two timeouts remaining. Keeping it on the ground. Baker again for the first down, up by midfield. That four-minute offense where you just have to make blocks, and that's exactly what they do. Up front across the board. They get a hat for a hat. They stay on people. They drive and they push. And they did a great job up front on that play. You had Ted Larson, the center, handling his man, Julian Williams, one guard. Alan Barbie, the other guard. Both of them making excellent blocks to open it up for Baker. Ted Larson had never played center before last year. He's one of the graduates on the line. Got a a little peek at him there, middle number 58. Avid Fisherman, who actually started his career here as a defensive tackle. Baker again. The go-to guy, over 100 total yards for Tony. And a, there's an injured Carolina player on the field in North Carolina State. Last time they beat a ranked opponent, what do you know? These guys in Chapel Hill a little over an hour, uh, a year ago. Here in six days. When they just thumped North, Carol North Carolina. TJ Yates did not play well in that game. Only 10 of 22 for 116 yards and an interception was yanked late in it. TJ has played very well today. EJ Wilson is down on the field for Carolina. 
And I mentioned the four minute offense Pam and what that is is basically when you're ahead and you have four minutes or less on the clock you want to be able to run the football not go out of bounds force the other team to use their timeouts and continue to move the chains and get first downs and basically run the clock out and that's exactly what the Wolfpack have been able to do thus far on this drive. Fans not quite believing that C.J. Wilson was hurt because <laughs> they got the stop clock. Wilson gets up and uh, as you see walking off. Well they'll start the clock once he gets off the field. There it is the clock is wound. We are inside three minutes and 30 seconds left to go. North Carolina has scored only three points in the second half. They put up 21 in the second quarter alone at a 10 point lead heading into the second half. But Russell Wilson. Yeah. Butch Davis calls the timeout. He was under the impression that clock would stop due to the injury. It stopped because of the timeout. Carolina only has one remaining and they're trailing NC State. Quite a finish brewing here. Pam Ward along with Ray Bentley. Second and seven for NC State, leading Carolina by one. But there's negative yardage. Zach Brown and Kevin Reddick with the stop on Baker. Just a great read right here by the linebacker. Scraping across. The defensive line fills in all the gaps. And then Reddick just scrapes across and fills the hole perfectly. Finishes off the play. And Carolina uses their final timeout. And uh, NC State losing four yards on that play. So here's a third and 11. No more timeouts for North Carolina. Russell Wilson has been terrific today. Yeah, he has. Started out early making an incredible pass here to Jarvis Williams. And then another one on a slant and go route. He's just been all over it today. In particular, a couple of deep balls. I don't know how he got that one into Owen Spencer. But when he's had to, and even though he's taken hits, He's been delivering the football, having some fun as well. 19 of 25 for 234 yards, four touchdowns, and incredibly, no interceptions. And uh, Wilson is a, you know, that's not a knock on Wilson. It's just we're used to seeing these Carolina guys pick off passes. They have 19 on the season, none today. And I think you have to go to the air here on this play with Wilson. I mean, there's, point, there's three minutes, 16 seconds left. Uh, First down here now that Carolina has no timeouts left can go a long way to icing this one. They roll Wilson he has a man wide open and he finds him. Perfectly executed play he goes back to Owen Spencer. Spencer with a couple of touchdown catches today but this first down catch big time huge. Carolina plays his zone. And Spencer's going to find the soft spot in between the corner and the safety right there. You see both of them show up just a little too late and a great block by Tony Baker to buy the time for Russell Wilson to thread the needle. They needed 11. They got 25 yards on that play. I kind of like too, the way Spencer caught the ball, saw a couple of defenders coming. He didn't try to get up and do anything fancy. Sat down. He knew he had the first down. Possession of the ball is everything. They don't need to score again. No, all they need to do is keep running it and using up as much of the clock as possible. And it helps when you have a back like Baker. Excuse me, Ray. I was going to say, Pam, they're, all, they're in field goal range, too. They could opt to go for a field goal here at the end of this drive, and that would make Carolina have to score a touchdown coming back to pull this thing from the fire. Their kicker, Josh Chakowsky, has made six straight field goals, but has not attempted one today. There he is, getting loose. The junior from Springfield, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. Keep an eye on this play clock. You want to snap that thing with about two seconds left on it. Wilson did just that. Tony pursued and taken down in the backfield. Reddick and Quinn converging on the tackle. North Carolina without timeouts. That was a three yard loss. Which Davis in his third season. 0 and 2 against NC State. He, he had this game in hand. They had this game early on. 
And we kept talking about how the Wolfpack were hanging around and hanging around. And Russell Wilson was able to make just enough plays. And all of a sudden, they're in the catbird seat, leading by one with the football deep in Carolina territory as the clock's winding down. They're going to use a timeout here, and they're, they're going to wind it down as far as they can and then talk about this third and 11. The third and 11 previously on this drive. Remember, that was the, when they threw the 25-yard pass to Spencer to keep the drive going. Wilson talking to Tom O'Brien, his head coach. There you see Daniel Imhoff. He actually is the backup quarterback today because the true backup, Mike Glennon, is out with a clavicle injury. So Imhoff became the backup. But fortunately for NC State, they've been able to go with this Russell Wilson guy all game long. Yeah, and I'll tell you what I would do is I would run the football and, and hopefully get a few yards regardless and then try the field goal. I would let the clock run all the way down again, use another timeout and then kick a field goal and take as much time off as I can. But I would not risk throwing the football here on this third and 11 since you're already in field goal range. It would be about a 45 yarder from here. How about a pass run option play for Wilson since he's so good with his with his feet and he would know you would I would trust to throw a would, low percentage pass. I would trust him, but I wouldn't call it. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to uh, Baker. Yeah, I'm running Tony Baker between the tackles straight at him. Third down and 11. Oh, they fumbled the snap, but Wilson jumped on top of it. Whoa. And he was going to hand that off to Baker right up the middle, but he didn't get the snap. You can see if it, it hit the quarterback's hands and then went straight back down to the ground. You see, he recovered, he recovered Ted Larson's shoe yeah, as well. Yeah, he was going to grab anything <laughs> he could. He recovered the shoe and the ball. Larson, his center. So there's the clock winding down. Now you let it go all the way down to zero, use your timeout, and then kick your field goal. Only about 27 seconds difference between the, the play clock and the game clock. But Wilson's so composed, isn't he? I know he's a sophomore, got to be a starter last year, but he just seems cool all the time. Yeah, he's really an impressive young man. You can see why he was the player of the year in the ACC Offensive Player of the Year last year and with 31 touchdown passes this year. Yep, he was the first team all ACC at the quarterback spot, first freshman to ever, to ever get that. So, okay, here we go, Ray. Would be a 45-yarder. What do you do? You kick yeah, it? I, I kick it. Tchaikovsky's long is 48. And that's what you got, you have the guy on scholarship for. You kick a field goal when you need a field goal. And I, I just can't see trying to punt here or going for it. I think you got to let your kid do what you brought him here to do. And you see the, the high percentage, and more specifically, he's four for four from 40 to 49 yards this year. He has had one kick blocked, but he did nail that 48-yarder where he talked about against Maryland, and that was the only ACC win so far for the Pack. The offense is still out there, and here comes Wilson. I don't understand what they're trying to do here. It's me. I'm kicking a field goal. And maybe they're going to try and draw him off sides and gain another five yards for the field goal. Oh, they're snapping, and they're going to throw it. Wilson taking a shot into the end zone to Spencer, and it's incomplete. Charles Brown didn't lose him that time. Wow. <laughs> Spencer almost had that. That would have been the final nail in the coffin. But I, I first guessed this thing, and I just, I'm wondering if Coach O'Brien didn't leave T.J. Yates and his receivers too much time here on the back end. Now, Coach Davis has no timeouts, so they're going to have to work the edges of the field. You know, remember, the clock will stop on a first down, but then it'll start up again as soon as they set the chains. That play only took five seconds off the clock, but there's only 23 seconds remaining. North Carolina takes over at State's 28, or their own 28, excuse me. Four-man rush. Yates goes up top, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Clem Johnson. One of the seniors for NC State. 
Going home with a, a last game gift. Late flags on the field, but those will be after the interception. They won't affect the play or the possession. Perhaps excessive celebration and rightly, rightly so. I would be excessively celebrating if I was a Wolfpack player or fan right now. Tom O'Brien gave Russell Wilson a little, a little hug. He's got the big smile on his face. Does the coach? Yeah. It played out for him. He put it on his defense. Put it on TJ Yates. And the Wolfpack hung around and then got it done. Giving up only three points in the second half. Trailed by 10 at the break. And uh, he's not letting go of that football. And you see Yates, he just throws up a prayer. This isn't even close to the receiver. And I'm sure that had something to do with the decision by Coach O'Brien, knowing that T.J. Yates is not a guy that's known for slinging it down the field in the last 30 seconds of a ball game. That's a second turnover of the game for North Carolina. NC State had zero. A team that was minus 13 in turnover margin, plus two today, and they get the victory. A great way to cap off a disappointing season. They have now beat North Carolina three straight times. The last two times when Carolina was ranked. And hats off to Coach O'Brien and congratulations to Coach Bible, who wasn't able to be here today. I know he's celebrating in that hospital as I'm sure he's quite aware of what his football team did today. Russell Wilson, 20 of 27, 259 yards and four touchdown passes. North Carolina, zero takeaways. They fall to NC State 28-27. The Tar Heels head to a bowl game. NC State heads to celebrate.